that something special and you need it if you want to get the best of the job. So I'm going to be taking us on how to write the best of CV or resume depending on what the organization that you're applying for requested from you. So you need to get these things right. So today you're going to be learning how to write either the CV or the resume and then the difference between the two and how to structure your CV or resume so that you don't miss that job. Although you are not presently there, but that's just you. So you need to get these things right. So let's try them as I take you on how to write your CV or your resume. Six times in the go out. Is very very competitive and on a daily basis a lot of people are trooping into it. As a matter of fact, every year a lot of people graduate either from high school, from the polytechnics, colleges of education, and even the universities. So you need to know how to put these things right so that you could be selected at the end of the day. Now, did you know that it takes just about seven to eight seconds for any human resource manager or the employer to assess your CV or your resume. Yes, it could be eight pages of CV, but it takes them just about seven to eight seconds. And you're going to ask me how you do that by the use of eight years. Yes, it's just, it's just a tracking system that helps them to assess your CV. So because it's a system-based assessment, nobody needs to burn time looking at your CV. So I'm going to tell you those salient things that all eight years are looking for. And if you don't get those salient points, no matter how good you are, you will definitely not be selected for the interview. So let's go on. Let's try that. So the average that you never get a second chance to give the first impression, it's very, very true when it comes to the CV writing. Yes. Because you're not going to get another chance to prove to them that you are good. The CV is the first impression and that's the first impression that they will work on concerning you. So if you don't get it right, automatically you will not be called for the interview even when you are very good. So let's go on and see what it takes to get your CV or your resume right. Now, the resume is the most common document that companies or organizations will always require from any applicant. Yes. So, you need to get this right. Now, let me start with the difference between a resume and a CV. A resume talks about who you are, but in a very summarized format. It talks about your personal contacts first. It talks about your employment history the things you were able to achieve in, in the organizations that you have worked for. Now, your resume is in, more interested in the skills and the things you can deliver. For as much as those things are important, you also need to tell us briefly about your educational history. You don't need to tell us if you're a degree holder. You don't need to tell us where you did your nursery school. It's not necessary. Yes. And then you, it's not even so important for you to tell us where you did your primary school, especially if it's a resume that you're putting up. So if it's a resume that you're putting up, you could start from your high school to your university or college. So that's a part. Also, your resume, because it is very, very summarized, it runs for just about one or two pages. So you need to be careful of the one that the employer wants from you. And for CVs, you can give us as much as four, five, six, and sometimes seven pages or more, as the case may be. So when it comes to CV, CV is more detailed. For as much as resume is usually being used in America, it could also be used any other place, but you need to know the difference. And most times, CV is used in most of the European countries, including African countries as well, and Australia. So you need to get these things right before you start developing your CV or your resume. So I'm going to tell you the five P's you need to get right in your resume. The first one is make sure that your resume is stainless. By that I mean, don't make your resume in a way that it's going to be stressful for someone. Whether it's someone that is looking at it, if it's a small organization or they receive few applications, obviously humans will look at it. So if humans will be looking at it, don't make it very stressful for them. 
okay? Make it very, very um, painless for their eyes. So by that I mean you're going to use some bullet points. Don't write a lot of long paragraphs for them. Just put everything down in bullet points so that any eye that gets into it, it will be The second P when you're putting up your resume is make sure that it is perfect. Proofread, make sure that your spellings and grammatical write-ups are in order. Make sure they are correct. And there is not going to be any opportunity for you to tell the employer that, oh, sorry, it was a typographical error. Because that's your first impression. And you're not going to be there to explain yourself. You need to get those things right. And then you need to also be sure of the page that you have. Like I've said earlier on, it is your resume. Please do not exceed two pages. And if it's a CV, you can continue as much as your CV could contain. And then be sure that if your resume or your CV is being submitted in paper form, please do not fold it up. Okay? Get envelope that is as big as if you're using an A4 paper. Make sure that the envelope is the one that can contain A4 paper without being folded without just folding the CV to make it adjustable to the envelope and then be sure that your positions are right so when you are positioning your CV on your paper be sure that it is well balanced and spelled out now I'm going to give you the types of resume you have the chronological resume you have the functional resume and then you have a combination of the two so for chronological resume, you need to spell out the things you have done in chronological order, okay? from the latest rather to the earliest that you did. So you need to put them in that order. And please, when you are doing this, don't just use a more general time to give us when you did maybe when you graduated from school or when you acquired a particular degree. By that I mean, don't tell us it was during spring 2015 that you got a particular degree. No use months and yay that will make it to be more specific and that will help your employer to know exactly when you achieved whatever you claim to have achieved so and then for the functional resumes and functional resumes the interest is basically on the skills that you have the skills that you can do, the things that you can deliver at every point in time so these are the things that, that you spell out more importantly in a functional resume. And then for the combination, you need to combine both your functional resume by telling us the, the things that you can do, the things that you have achieved in the past, and then you also need to put those things in chronological order. Now I'm going to give you the, some things that employers are looking out for. Remember, it's not about your perspective. It's about the employer's perspective. So each time you're putting up your resume, be sure that you're looking at that resume from the eyes of the employer, if you get that job. Okay, so let's go on and look at what the employers are looking out for. So for the first one, the employers are looking out for clarity and your formatting um, ability. So you need to make your CV as clear or your resume as clear as possible. By that I mean that you're going to use bullet points to spell out the things you want the employer to know about you. When you don't use um, bullet points and then you use long paragraphs, it makes the whole thing look very clumsy. And then your CV is not a place for you to show for the colors, how you can mix up colors. Always use black and white when you are putting down your CV. And for rare occasions, you could add one or two colors that are related to the things you are talking about. But on a standard measurement, we always go for black and white. Now, the second thing you need to also know in the eye of the, of the employer is that the structures and the sections. Okay. Now, the employer is looking at your structure. How would you? put up the structure of your CV. So I'm going to give you some things that you need in your structures. The first one is your contact. Yes, your personal contact. And by that I mean, you're going to give them your name, your address, and by this address, it's more of your email address. You can also give your LinkedIn and then your, your Facebook link, as the case may be. So 
your employer or the organization needs to know some certain things about you. You can also give them your phone number, very, very important. And then your email address is very important. So make sure that these things are there. Now, you may not put exactly where you reside, but you can put the town or the city where you reside. Because nobody is going to look for you at number four, whatever clothes that you write. And you know what? For security reasons, it's not always advisable to write the specific address where you reside. So the employers will not go to your house to look for you, but they can always check you up via your email, your LinkedIn, and other links that you give them. Also, the employer is not looking for you to answer it's not expecting you to answer question with question. So for as much as they've asked for your CV or your resume, you're not going to title your work resume or what we call invited. That means you're answering a question with a question. What are you going to start your work with? And that's the title. It's your name, which you give us in bold format. Now, be sure that the contents that you have in your digital addresses are same with the contacts that you have on your CV. Let what you talk about in your CV also be similar with what you have in your LinkedIn. By that, the employer will see that you are consistent in person and that will give you a chance to get the offer or call for an interview. Remember, we're looking at these things from the eye of the employer. Now, I want you to also know that the employer is looking at your summary or your objective. And that's the next thing that comes after your contact address. Now, in your summary or your objective, you need to be specific with what you are giving the employer. Don't not just say, yes, I can do this. I want to join the company so that I can do this. No. You need to be specific with the things that you do. That's your career objective. And make sure that these things align with the career objective of the company as well. Also let them know the things that you, you can do within a specific time. Let it be measurable. Don't just make it so bogus and open. Let it not be endless. Let it be specific and time bound. Okay, these are the things that your employers are looking out for. They want to know that skill that you have and how you can use it for the good of the company. Okay, and then the employer needs to see that your objective or your summary aligns with the objective or the goal of the company or the organization you are aspiring to work with. Also know that the professional qualifications are also necessary. That's the next boss you need to complete. And then your education, the things, the, your educational background, they are also important. They also want to know your employment experience or history. And then they want to know your awards, your honors, and then your community service. These are the things they want to know. Now, depending on who you are, you're going to structure these things depending on who you are. Assuming you are a fresh graduate, we expect that once you are done with your personal information and then your, your summary or your objective, the next thing we are expecting is your educational background. Yes, because that's what you need to fly. That's what you have at the moment. So tell us the good schools you attended. Tell us the, the degrees you, or you obtained from those schools. If you had scholarships while in school, tell us you had a scholarship. So these are the things they are looking out for. And then if you're done with that, if you had any employment history, perhaps while you were still in school, when you did your industrial attachment, you did a summer job, they want to know what you did there and what your job role was and what you were able to achieve as well. These are the things they want to know. And then for your award section or your or, or your honors, honors that you obtained, uh, the community services that you did and other things you were able to achieve, they also need to get these things spelled out. These are the things that makes you stand and it in, also includes your leadership ability. We get leadership roles that you did while in school, they need to get these things on the board. So make sure you spell these things out for them because it's going to help them to know if you are what the job or not. 
Also, let me remind you, be also quick to list your soft skills. Let them know the soft skills that you have as well. These things will help to spice up your CV or your resume and it will definitely help to, to make them call you at the end of the day for an interview. These things will help to attract you for an interview. Now, having done that, um, am I missing out on, this, on any section? Am I? I think someone is saying, yes, what are the referees? Currently today, the referees are not necessary in your CV and in your resume. You know why? If you are being selected, the company will definitely write and ask you to submit your referees. And once you do that, it's going to be an automatic mail to them. And those referees will write on your behalf. You're not going to see what they wrote concerning you. So today, it's already off the show to always write the names of your referees, your contact address, this and that about them. Once the company has selected you, they will definitely ask you for your referees. And that will help you to, to know I'm going somewhere. At least I've passed one of the tests when they call you to ask for your referees. So I want to believe you have learned how to write your CV. I'm going to give you some examples. You can use the tabular format or you can use the chronological order format and make sure the CV is right. The next edition, I'm going to give you a super class on how to attend and answer your interview questions. If you're preparing for your interview, what is expected of you. So make sure you subscribe and like the page. You know why you need to subscribe? You need to subscribe to also encourage us to get the best of videos for you as you progress in life to become the best. Get inspired.